G'day guys, Mad Matt here. So as many of you know, Mrs. Mad Matt and I have sold up in Sydney and we've hit the road. Well, we're really enjoying this new lifestyle now. We're only, what, a week and a half into it. But in this video, I'm gonna reveal a whole heap of new vehicle and new something else. You wanna check it out? Here you go. I know many of the American audience are looking at this going, really? You've got an F-250. How boring. All right, here in Australia, the F-250 is a expensive four-wheel drive. It's like three times the price of what you guys are paying for them. And there's not a lot of them around because they're all imported. And most of them get converted from left-hand drive to right-hand drive. Now, this one is a 2002 model. It was built in Brazil. And it's got a motor that you Americans never got. That's right, this has got the MWM 4.2 turbo diesel in it. That's right, people. I own a diesel vehicle. You're all going, oh. we all thought Mad Matt was just hardcore petrol. Yeah, look, we're keeping the 105. We've got the race car, the Bandera's in getting rebuilt. But I've always maintained as much as I've joked about petrol, I've always maintained that diesel absolutely has a place and that is when you need to tow heavy loads and you want to do remote work. You need a long range. Now the 105, if I'm babying it on the open road, I can get about 900, 950 k's out of the 200 and something odd litres of fuel on board. This baby is doing about 13 litres per 100 if it's not towing, and when it's towing the caravan, it's doing around about 19 to 21 litres per 100, depending on the terrain we're travelling in. All of those speeds are based on about 100 kilometres an hour. So this is returning excellent fuel economy compared to the petrols. And it tows really, really well. Because it's got that longer wheelbase, it means that we can tow stable. This, this 22 foot Kokoda Caravan doesn't even push this vehicle around. How does this thing tow? Honestly, really, really well. It'll happily sit on 100K an hour, fully loaded, and um, you know, up, up, up and down slight rises. Come to the really big hills, yeah, she slows down a bit. And, if it's an extremely steep climb, I'll drop down into about second gear and sort of crawl up at it at maybe 40 to 50 kilometers an hour. But I really don't care about that. I wanna add here, I'm all about letting everybody else pass, pass me. So if I'm going slow up a hill, I just pull over and let people go past and then I uh, get back on the road again. Cause I refuse to be one of those miserable caravan owners that's like, oh, I own the road, oh, I pay my taxes. I don't give a stuff, mate, you're a moron. Anyway, so, Let's go and have a look at the F truck a bit further. So as you can imagine, I'm pretty excited about having a big truck like this. Now, the reason we went this way was towing the caravan. The 105 has the power, it doesn't have the brakes, it doesn't have the GVM, and it doesn't have the wheelbase to control the load. And even when I'm towing the car trailer, the 105 is not the best tow vehicle for that load. Despite what people think, it's just not, okay? It's physics, big, you, well, you can't have the dog, the, the, the tail wagging the dog, that's the end of the day. So we went this way, it's not only a tow, tow rig for towing the race car, I can put all my race tools and stuff in the back and all that. It's also for towing the caravan while we live on the road. So it's got multiple purposes. I think it'll stay in the fleet for a fair while. Um, towing this caravan with this thing is an absolute breeze. It just does the job. Not from the point of, view of power, it's a little bit gutless, but it's got enough power to do the job and I'm happy with the power. It controls it in the sense of on your windy, bumpy road, the caravan's not pushing this thing around at all. And it's got 35s and a four inch lift. I've actually owned this about five, four, six weeks, something like that. Bought it from a guy called Ben Dan in Adelaide. Um, I bought it sight unseen because of COVID. That was a scary, scary thing. The most expensive vehicle I've ever purchased 
and I bought it sight unseen, but Ben was just totally honest above board and I, I'm absolutely stoked with the purchase. Now, since I've owned it, I've done a bunch of mods, as you can imagine, I wanna make it our own to suit our needs. So, and I've got a few more mods that I need to do coming up. So, one of the big ones on the front here, as you know, I love the Ultra Vision lights. I'm gonna have a chat to them in the new year. We're gonna put a set of Ultra Vision lights on the front here. Um, I'll also go and have a chat to me mates down there in uh, Melbourne at Roadrunner Off-Road because I think we need a, a, a better winch than what's in here. I'm not even going to tell you what it is because I'm ashamed of it. Um, these guys here, the four-wheel drive zone, small workshop up there in Bathurst. Um, they just do great mechanical work. If you want to support them, go on up there. But they helped me install the Tough Dog suspension that I've put in this. The old suspension was pretty sagged, pretty how you're going. So um, Tough Dog did, did sharpen the pencil for me a little bit, but I still pay, paid um, a pretty good price for the suspension kit. These, so it's got the Tough Dog big bore adjustable uh, shocks on it, and it's got their four inch zero to 500 kilogram rated suspension system. That's all working really well in the sense of holding the load, but the ride is absolutely atrocious, to be honest. I don't know why. I've been messing around with the, the sh settings on the shocks. It's still harsh, so I'll talk to Tough Dog about maybe pulling one of the lead springs out of the rear suspension to soften the ride. That's a little bit of the overview. That's the front end, like big five-poster bull bar. It looks uh, absolutely obnoxious and uh, it certainly makes people turn their heads. It's completely hopeless off-road, as you can imagine. You'd just about bottom out on a speed bump. And hey, it's not really an off-road rig, it's a towing rig, so I'm not worried about that. I kind of like it, it's kind of different, it looks great. So let's have a look at the engine bay here. As you can see, it's pretty high, so you climb up here on the bull bar when you want to work on the beast. So here's the motor, bring the camera over, this is bad, mate. It's an MWM uh, 4.2 Sprinter motor. These are an industrial motor. They, um, they've been around for a lot of years. Basically, uh, um, they're part of the Navistar group, which is Volvo Penta. Nowadays, anyway, they've been bought out. But it's, um, you know, it's an 18 valve overhead um, valve engine. Um, I, I don't know a whole lot about it yet. I know it works. It's a nice motor. It really... On the road, it's just a nice diesel. It just purrs along, it does the job. Um, I'm gonna look at probably down the track, looking at um, upgrading the turbo. This turbo's got probably, well, I don't know, I'm guessing 350,000 Ks on it. It's probably never been touched. It still throws in 21 pound of boost quite happily, but I reckon a modern turbo would probably make it uh, a lot happier. Other than that, intercooled, it's got a massive great intercooler in the front there. Um, it's just a proper industrial engine. So I'm pretty happy with that. One of the things I do like about these, because these trucks are built to tow, that's the, they, 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 they compromise in a lot of areas. The fit and finish in, inside the cab's pretty how you're going if, if you're comparing it to Toyota and that, but they're built to tow and tow they do. It's got Hydro Boost brake system standard. The thing just stops. There's no, it just, you want to stop, you stop. That's how it works. It's really good. Unlike Toyota, mind you, I'm very familiar with the fact that this also has a pretty dodgy handbrake. But anyway, I like that. It makes me feel at home. All right, so um, let's have a look um, over here. Another modification that Ben did, and being a diesel mechanic, this is massive for me, but he's put up water filtration, separation filter, and then a main filter as well. So it's got really good fuel filtration, and he put a lift pump in it. So it's, I really like that. Now, the other thing I'm getting installed, and I'll do a video on this, is I've just purchased at full price um, a Jackmaster oil bypass filtration system. It's basically a toilet roll filter. The one thing that kills a diesel motor is, is you know, bad oil and bad fuel. So I'm addressing both those issues. The fuel's addressed, I'm gonna address the oil and uh, it'll extend my service intervals as well. So I'll show you a video on that down the track. So pretty cool. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's go this direction, shall we? So, <laughs> it's a long way up in the air, isn't it? All right, it's got a nice tinted window, tinted windows on it, which is nice on the road. Have a look inside. Excuse the mess, guys, we're living on the road. You know, it's a, it's a practical beast. Now, but a mate of mine, this thing, because it's basically um, 
base spec, if you will. Doesn't have SRS, um, SRS airbags or anything like that. It's pretty truck, truck vinyl interior, which is fine. So I've, we ripped the whole interior out of this thing. We put Dynamat down, we um, cleaned it all up. We did a whole bunch of work on that and that made it a lot quieter and more comfortable inside. And I spoke to a mate of mine, Aiden, and he custom made a center console for me here and he's in the process of custom making a console for up here where the airbag would normally go and then we're gonna have like a mat pocket on here. So we got some in-cab storage. Um, you got massive door pockets, which are great for storing stuff as well. So um, good old um, manual windows. Um, when you've got to unlock the passenger door from the driver's seat, it's a big, big stretch. <laughs> Bring the camera in here. <laughs> so, Mrs. Mad Matt just smacked the door and now she's got a bruise. Oh, um, so Ben installed two brass monkey fridges in the center console. That's right, two, because it's big enough to install two fridges in the center console. I was always at one of those blokes that's like, ah, oh, you, you really want a center console fridge? Would you use it? Blah, blah, blah. I love it. That's so good. It's so good. We've got a UHF radio in here, which um, was in it when I bought it. It's got a EGT got boost, I installed a voltmeter. I've got the Safety Dave rear view camera for the caravan up the back here. I've put a phone holder thingo in and um, and we've still got the stock seats which aren't the most comfortable in the world. So I do want to install some seats in this that uh, um, I'm gonna ask around, see if we can find some suspension seats to install in this vehicle. I think that would make the ride considerably better. It, it really is not a pleasant ride when you hit those back country roads and it's Oh, moves a lot. So we want to sort that out. Okay, now these these have little suicide doors. Many of you would have seen our little dog, Chloe, or the dog as I call her. I don't know where she is at the moment. Hey, Chloe, come here. Come and talk to the camera. So this is Chloe. She's our 13 year old little puppy and she's living on the road now. She's not sure if she enjoys it, but this is her spot. So we harness her in there and she sits there and goes to sleep, and she oh, she's pretty happy about it. Um, but she's she loves just sniffing around. You know what dogs are like. And she doesn't get on, doesn't play well with other dogs, which is interesting. <laughs> but anyway, she's having a great time as well, aren't you, Chloe? Yes. All right. So moving back, I've always enjoyed having a Ute, but I always like having lots of dry space to store things. Now, Ben is a boilermaker, and so he built this tray, and when he first sent pictures of it to me, I'm like, this is perfect for the way I'm going to use the vehicle. So, well, I'll have to show you on the other side, that's, up, that's still locked. Um, but these storage boxes are great. We've got lots of good gear stored in there on the four of those. This one here, in under the tray, Ben installed a big, um, water tank so we have plenty of water that's pretty cool eh um drop sides they all all fall down um tie down points on the inside here so we can tie the load down um you know three and a half ton rated hitch on the back here so pretty good so the tires are a maxis razor believe it or not so they were on it when i bought the vehicle um, 3157516 and they're on these Mickey Thompson wheels. I'm not sure exactly what uh, what style that is, but I like it. And that's probably what matters. Uh, let's have a look at the rear suspension. You'll notice the rear suspension actually has dual shocks. So two at the back and then two at the front. So four shocks for the rear axle. Spare tire up there. We've got two solar panels on the roof here. So whilst we're traveling, I'm pretty much leaving those fridges running the whole time uh, because we've got enough solar to keep that running. Under the tray here, there's a big, I, think, I don't know how big it is, but it's a massive um, battery. So we've not only got the vehicle battery, but we've got the battery under the tray um, all being charged off the solar. So we've pretty much got unlimited power. Um, this is not my scene. Um, these are the worst drawers in the world. Um, they're cheap and uh, yeah, so I'm going to very definitely be talking to my mates down there at um, Off-Road Systems in Sydney about doing something better in the back here. But 
at the moment, this is all my traveling tools and I'm, I'm in this drawer every day fixing something. I can't help myself. Um, and I, I, because I'm on the road, I've, I've got my other tool, tra traveling tool bag here, which has just got more stuff. And my swimmers, you've got to have your swimmers. Um, this side here is all the vehicle spares. Because it's a little bit of a unique vehicle, I'm carrying spare fuel, oil, wheel bearings, a whole bunch of different spares specific to the vehicle. And then general stuff as well, you know, grease gun and stuff like that, so that we can look after the vehicle on the road. I, being a motor mechanic, I can't think of anything worse than getting on the road and needing something and going, if I had that, I could fix the job. So probably got a bit too much stuff in here, but I'd, I'd sort of rather be prepared than, than otherwise. And like I say, I'm in there every day. So guys, that's that's a bit of a walk around of the EFI. Um, and uh, I think we should go over and have a look at the caravan. Hey, how about we do that? So it's a few days later, let's check out this caravan. So we're at a mate's property and uh, we've got the menagerie of animals. This is Buddy the sheep that follows me around like a pet dog. There's Chloe. There's Tessa under the caravan. I'll show you Tessa in a minute. But anyway, this is a Kokoda 22 foot um, caravan off-road. So it's got the full chassis. Um, so there's Tessa underneath there. Um, yeah, she's the uh, mobile garbage disposal unit. Eats anything. And uh, yeah, so full chassis. Uh, right through all of that sort of stuff. Yeah, g'day buddy. You're trying to help aren't you? Um, for that's got the coil suspension under there. So this is the force 2 um, So that you all know we paid full whack for this uh, Caravan uh, Kokoda didn't give us any discounts or anything like that. So no, you know, it's just it is what it is um, So there's a bit of a story behind it, but um, I'll, I'll get to that in a second So just showing you around the outside here, you know, just that front locker sort of thing um, In here we've got the Weber on the other side. We've got a generator. So that kind of works for us So let's go inside and uh, this is a little bit personal because this is kind of personal space But we're showing you because I think many of you would probably be kind of interested. So we went this size caravan mainly because we've got to work in here so here's the video that you're currently watching being edited well we're halfway through it so we needed some specific things or we felt we did in the layout of the caravan so we needed this i think they call that a, a club lounge um, design so that we can have a workspace so mrs mad matt we spin this around we've just done it for this video we spin this around she can sit over there do the editing do all the work and stuff like that so that's why we wanted that facility we don't need it for it can be made into a bed don't care about that um and we liked having all this storage space up above here. So, you know, lots of cupboards um, and stuff. And we, at first we thought, oh, we won't fill all of those. Yeah, guess what we have. Um, so, yeah, it's got the nice Sirocco fans, which apparently are the bee's knees. And a washing machine. Yeah, uses a lot of water. Don't, yeah, don't use that on the tanks. Fresh veggies from the garden. Um, yeah, so what else can I show you in here? Um, it's got an oven uh, and grill and then electric and gas burners inside here uh, which is pretty good uh, it's got the Australian made BM Pro electronics so you've got your main control centre here which controls your water your solar it's got 360 watts of solar up there um, stereo Bluetooth that's pretty cool works nice nice air conditioning unit we're using that a lot at the moment because of the heat um, up in this cupboard here is the master all the stuff for the BM Pro stuff so this this stuff BM Pro, they're down in Melbourne um, and they make a lot of gear for caravans and that and it's I've been had a tour through their factory and I was pretty impressed um, I did do a little bit of work with them many years ago now one of the key features that Mrs Mad Matt and I liked about this layout firstly the master bedroom <laughs> how does that sound is private you when you first come in the door of the caravan you're not seeing the master bedroom that so that's just kind of a privacy thing if you're having guests and stuff but this having the center sort of shower and toilet thing is pretty cool you've got these two doors so you can isolate 
you know, if you've got guests or whatever, or, you know, you've got some privacy if you go into the bathroom or you want to have a shower, but you can still access the bedroom for when you're having a shower privately. Alternatively, you know, you can shut this door if you've got up early, which happens regularly, and, um, you know, one of you is still sleeping or you want to go and have an hour nap, and you can still use the toilet and uh, shower space while staying out here while the other person's having a snooze. So we really liked that centre bathroom concept for those reasons. Yeah, it's got the Thetford uh, toilet. That's an interesting pr process. I was always a bit, oh, I don't want to deal with the toilet, but it's not too bad. Emptied it today. Um, shower. Yeah, all of these units here are from Bunnings. Um, can't remember the brand. What was the brand? Fusion Lock. So they're vacuum units. They just vacuum onto the flat, smooth surface and then you can hold whatever you want. So we've got them there for soaps and conditioner and all that sort of stuff. We've got hand soap one there. This is a towel rail, which we put in again. So you're not drilling holes in the caravan. So they, they work an absolute treat. So we, we spent a bit of money getting those. Um, here's our bedroom. Yep, so nice queen bed. And again, when we first looked at this, we are like, oh, that bed looks so small. Um, you know, I'm six foot and tall, and so is it gonna be big enough? But yeah, it is, it certainly is, it's quite comfy. Um, there's me on my wedding day. Jeez, he had hair and a moustache. Yeah, all right, enough of that. Here's a much better photo. So, Mrs. Madnut on her wedding day. There you go. Hey, hey, you can see why I kept her around. And uh, the book I'm reading. And, oh, check this out, check this out. Yep, here we go. So, Maxis um, sent us their calendar. Yeah! Race car in the Maxis calendar, May, woohoo! And uh, we've got two Sirocco fans in here. That's how we're living on the road now. So we're looking forward to bringing you a whole bunch more content um, around the F-Truck, around the caravan, around what we're doing now. There's gonna be changes. We're not sure exactly what all of those changes are gonna be, but it's pretty exciting um, to be at that point in life where you your kids are off your hands and you're in a position where all of that hard work over the last uh, eight years of building Mammoth Fall Drive is starting to pay off in the sense that we're starting.